Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon and welcome to Knowledge Talks. A weekly edutainment and knowledge sharing program at live specifically to share with you topics that contribute knowledge to the society. Every week, Knowledge Talks hosts and invites guests that are experts, professionals, and leaders from the field that bring wealth of knowledge to you. Knowledge Talks also highlights and promotes talents in the country that contribute knowledge and success to the nation. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is a weekly session that I will have with you every Tuesday at 5 p.m. I'm your host, Tariq Al Al-Barwani, along with us, Rujo Engineer DJ Safiya, for an hour bringing you free knowledge at your doorsteps on Oman Radio FM 90.4. Now stay tuned after this music break for today's interesting interview and interesting knowledge topic. Welcome back to Knowledge Talks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Tariq Al Al-Barwani, along with us, Eugenia DJ Safiya, with you here live today on Oman Radio FM 90.4. You must have heard or used Sabla or Romania.net discussion board forum in one way or another. You might have been impacted or have seen impact with it as well in one way or another too. The platform indeed made its round in the Sultanate, MashaAllah, and the number of users of this system was in tens of thousands. The question however is, do you know who was the man behind this great platform? And did you also know how did it all start and the way it was created from home to a gigantic site, mashallah. Well, my guest today, ladies and gentlemen, is the man behind it. Mr. Saeed Al-Rashdi, the founder of Sablat Al-Arab and the CEO of a Nasser Investment Development Company, a great personality, a techie, and indeed a profile of my show, today. Saeed is a master's degree with merit in e-business technology from the University of Manchester. Bachelor's degree in information engineering from Hull University and is chartered IT professional from the British Computer Society. He also has a PMP, Project Management Professional, Certified Data Center Design Professional from CNET. He's the man with a multi-IT skill set. Masha Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Sheikh Saeed, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Thank you for having me today. No, it, it is an honor, Saeed. Uh, truth be told, you are a person that you and I, we come from a very long, long time yeah. ago. When was it? MCBS College? Yeah, we met at the college. At MCBS College, and yeah. you had a program that you had designed at that time. At that time, we, we started the, I think it was called the Arabian Club. Arabian Club. Yeah, it was I... one of the first websites that we had here. Yeah. And uh, it was a static page, but we managed to gather a few guys. And I remember having meeting you online yeah. before we actually met in life. Yeah. And the first time we met face to face was in the college. Was in the college. And, and it was a great one. You, you know, I think I met you. I saw you somewhere. And you're like, oh, yeah, I think I saw you somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mashallah, mashallah. It was a great point in time. And from that time till today, I have never stopped admiring the great things oh, you do, mashallah, and your thank personality. You. Thank you. Today, Oman has lost an important society impacting scholar, Sheikh Khalfan Al Isri. May Allah honor him and grant him with peace, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. He's a, we, he's a great we, man. We, we really feel very sad for the loss of Sheikh Khalfan. He was one of the greatest people I've ever known. Uh, he's a sheikh. At the same time, a very open-minded sheikh who managed to be a businessman, an entrepreneur, and a sheikh. And, you know, he was just a different category. I don't think I know anybody else with the skills that Sheikh Alfan had, the way that he convinced people, the way that he, uh, he shows you uh, the interest. I remember in the early days when we started the website, he made me. He, he asked me to develop some websites for 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 some societies. So it was a charity a charity mm. websites, mm. and he was a really kind person. I Mashallah. felt really sorry today to hear Mashallah. the news, but this is life, yeah. and yeah. you know. Yeah. He has impacted a lot of people in Oman, and inshallah, he has created many leaders as himself. Inshallah. inshallah. May Allah honor him and inshallah. grant him we with just peace. Pray for him, everybody, please. I mean, inshallah. Said, my great friend, Said. 
tell me one thing i know about you okay, okay? We, we we come from a very long time as as, as in a really long years i've said but of course there's a number of people that know the great things that you have done mashallah our biggest example is the umania.net sablat al arab but before we get into that and our question is please share with us your profile well my name is saeed nasr rashti i am married i have uh, four kids four lovely kids mashallah last one is just one month old now mashallah um started my life with technology since i was in uh, actually preschool my father took a very good care of me when it comes to technology he's the one who 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 introduced uh, computers to me uh, please send my regards to your dad i really <laughs> respect thanks um he he got me a computer a Sinclair computer Sinclair yes oh the good days though the black one <laughs> the, Wait, and you got a tape recorder with, with 120 128k uh, yes. yeah, run, running memory and there is obviously <laughs> no storage so yeah. those days I, i i had to connect the computer to a tape player in order to load the game yeah. or, or do a small application and then Uh, when I was in, uh, I think, second grade, he got me Sakhar. Sakhar, oh, yes, yes, Sakhar. the white. I'm talking uh, about the old uh, stuff now. Yeah, yeah. MashaAllah. So, uh, d- during these days, I learned how to do, you know, basic programming and stuff like that. In fact, that. those devices had the basic uh, programming uh, uh, built into them. Built in. So, Sakhar had, yeah, Sakhar had the basic, the yeah. very basic version of basic. Yeah. So, those days, I, ha- I started doing programs, minor programs, like designing around square shape or, yeah. you know, playing a game Select, or stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. In those days computers were very rare and uh, to be someone with with uh, with exposure to technology from that early age that really helped me and during school time um i i was introduced to my first uh, personal computer okay. we used to call them ibm compatible computers okay. uh, it was uh, when i think it was eighth grade or so and i was the only kid with a computer the, even, in even in the school when i go yeah. to the school they used to ask me to 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 print some papers and bring them back to school next day. <laughs> so I was pretty famous and pretty well known because of technology. Oh, and, uh, you know, the, the the interest in technology has never faded with me I, until today. I always like to, you know, I'm always following up the technology and always to like to be in touch, but it also differs. I, I had to work in the technology field. And when you work in something, you tend not to like it as much as before. Okay. This is what happens. So like you would spend thousands of hours playing in Photoshop and designing things. But once you are asked to do to be a professional Photoshop editor, it's not going to be as much fun as before. You can get someone to do it. Anyway. Exactly. And you, 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 you will be doing it because you have to. And okay. that's where the difference happened. Yeah. But still, I'm, I'm still in touch with technology, as, as I guess. Yeah. Mashallah. You are the CEO of an Nasr. This is a company, your company. Yes. Tell us about it. Yes. Uh, an Nasr company started because I thought that you know young guys with with minimum income and well, not minimum income at some time getting a thousand real per month used to be something huge but nowadays a thousand real per month is barely living and and uh, for someone with an income like that to be able to own his own apartment or house was almost impossible so i i managed to come up with a with a solution where you have to pay an equivalent or lower amount to the rent so you own your own apartment And the business uh, was very successful. I started one year ago. I finished one project, one 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 building, and th- three more buildings are coming very soon. So business is doing very well. Mashallah, I can definitely tell the business is doing very good. Mashallah, from the Lamborghini that just came, <laughs> you parked it outside. You, you had to mention it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we need to go yes, ride yes, with yes, it too. Yes, yes. Mashallah, uh, Saeed, Sablat al Arab. Okay. Omania dot net, English Sabla, Sabla in general is a site that uh, was launched uh, uh, during the 90s yeah and 19, has done great as exactly yes you have done that site yes tell us about it in 1997 i've started i've booked a domain called omania.net why um, omania.net omania it's like a shabaka omania so translation omania.net maybe not the best translation but that's what came in my mind i was just and 18 years old or so so I, I did I did register that domain and I started having websites in English. At that time, it was very hard to have an Arabic website because Arabic was not supported in the browsers. Encoding. So I had to wait until Arabic was supported in the default Explorer in the newer Windows versions. But during that time, I had a website that talks about Oman. And, and because there wasn't any other website, I think the only website that existed about Oman at that time was Ministry of Information's website. Um, I think Oman.net or something. Which, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, many people approached me, uh, you know, people who wanted to come to Oman and wanted to know more about Oman used to communicate with me. And I had so many friends from the outside world and I really like what I'm doing. But sometime I felt that Omanis were using, uh, uh, there was like uh, two or three bulletin boards in mm. Arabic language. In Oman? Started, no, not in Oman, mm. across the Arab world. 
mm-hmm. in 1999, early 1999, and there was plenty of Omanis there. Mm-hmm. And I thought that we have to have a website that says in the name itself that this is an Omani website, so that mm-hmm. you know all the discussions um, is a bit private. We, we talk about stuff that is related to Oman. It's not necessarily we don't the whole the, uh, the whole Arab world to know about it. So that's the idea. So I wanted to have a bulletin board. I didn't know how to do a bulletin board at that time. It was a CGI script. CGI mm-hmm. scripting was really hard. But I found an application um, by one one person, and I bought it for for quite a hefty amount. And I have started this uh, Sepla website. It's a bulletin board. Mm. By today's standard, bulletin board can be installed in half an hour. Mm. You can book a website, V bulletin mm. installed in half an hour. But in those mm. days, it was much more complicated. You had mm. to know how to deal with the database, and you had to, you know, do all the manual things mm. yourself. Yeah. So the website started, and uh, believe it or not, when I started, I I really did not expect it to be very successful. I uh, my maximum um, expectations were maybe a hundred visitors a day or something. That would mm. have been brilliant mm. so i started the website and i've told my friends about it and one of my colleagues who works in a lot of newspaper wrote, wrote an article about it and then the, it started to gain uh, to gain uh, what you call it uh, visitors and then within within seven years of operation in the last few days i was having more than three hundred thousand visits a day mashallah now, 300, the population is of oman especially mm. those days were less than three million we're talking about Almost 10% of the country's population accessing Quality. the website every day. So you, you are more like the media by itself? By Alexa.com standards. You know, Alexa.com is, is a website that, that tracks the, the monitors, and the, the yeah. statistics. Yeah. O- Omania.net was amongst the most visited 1,000 websites in the world. 1,000 And I'm websites. talking about yeah. Google, I'm talking about Yahoo, I'm talking about yeah. everybody Mashallah. else. Mashallah. I was Mashallah. amongst the 1,000 uh, most visited websites. And obviously in Oman, it was the most visited website, even more than Google itself. Yeah. Um, so the site became very successful and managing it from the technical perspective became much more difficult because from hosting to hosting, I was t- kicked out from server to server. Oh, Each yeah, hosting company usually, that. when you when you overload them, yeah. and you know they, they usually say we have unlimited bandwidth and stuff, and but w- as soon as you have so many visitors, you start harassing them because the server is overloaded. Yeah. So I used to move from server to server. It, it just become becomes more difficult. Yeah. And from the administrative part, because it's an open website, and uh, maybe I want to talk a little bit about how it changed the mindset of people, the way that you s- they speak about things. Yeah. In Oman, we never had an open platform for people to say what they think of. In newspapers, used to be self-controlling, because uh, as an editor of a newspaper, I will yeah. always want to protect my interest with the businesses around me, with the, with the government relations mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And a one-way communication too. Yeah, it's a one-way communication mm-hmm. too. And if they allow people to speak in the newspaper, usually it's an under control environment. Now, suddenly out of nowhere, in this very controlled environment, a website comes and mm-hmm. lets you almost say anything you want. And it was it's, it was different. People ma- managed to come inside uh, to the website and, mm-hmm. and write whatever they think. Mm-hmm. The initial stage was a bit difficult because they just you know, when you unleash something, someone was completely closed for a very long time and you open to him, he'll start running. Yeah. So people started abusing the website to mm. some extent. Mm. I've seen so many things that I wouldn't want to see in my website at that time. Mm. But through time, and through these seven years, I've noticed that a, a, a change in trend. Suddenly people started questioning what's, what's being written. So if today somebody uh, logs into the website and says, this so-and-so minister or responsible person somewhere has stolen a million real, mm. The first reaction in the early days would be like uh, they will start cursing him and they'll, uh, they'll actually just buy the whole idea and believe him. Mm. But as things changed and they started seeing that not everything is written here is true, mm. people started trying to make, uh, judge uh, the article when they read it mm. and, and, and see if this really, does it, does it seem like a valid article? You can easily sense if it is true or just somebody who is upset because he couldn't get the service that he wanted. Mm. So by the seventh year, by the time, prior to the time we closed Sebla, it was a really different scenario. People, people would come in to, to, to the website and, and, and read the articles and actually discuss with the writer and ask him, why would you say this guy has stolen this money? If you show an evidence. Mm. So this is how it changed. Mm. This is the, trend, the trend has changed. It changed yeah. the mindset of people, the behavior, and, uh, and also for some, uh, um, to some extent uh, it has changed how uh, people who are, for instance, who are doing wrong things to be a bit of cautious. Yeah. And uh, 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 accepting criticism was mm. not there. 
I remember in the early days, uh, I got a phone call from someone who used to be uh, running an institute or so. I mm-hmm. think he was running an institute. He called me and he spent 45 minutes shouting at me. <laughs> and he really cursed me in the phone. He was telling me like, I, I mean, the worst you can imagine, mm. the worst words. And uh, I tried to take it easy, but I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know what, what was wrong. Mm-hmm. So I tried to relax him and told him, don't worry about it. You know what? I'm going to go to the website. I'll check what was written and I'll take care of it. I'll delete it. And he was, no, I'm going to. And after all these 45 minutes of listening for him shouting at me, I went to the website and I saw that somebody wrote that the management of this institute is a lo- some kind loser. of a loser or something. Yeah. So he didn't like that. Said, really? For that? I have had to listen for 45, 45 minutes, minutes of torture <laughs> <laughs> for that. But things have changed. People yeah. knew that, you know, um, um, everybody has the right to speak to some extent as long as he's, you know, being reasonable about it. Yeah. So I actually yeah. believe that Sebla has managed to make a difference in the country within the years that of, of its operation. It, it, it definitely is. Lady, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the number to call in is 2460-2058. I repeat again, that's 2460-2058. And the great man himself, Mr. Said Rashidi, is here. Uh, if you have any question to ask him, if any of the questions that I ask, he is available here to call in. 2460-2058. Said, why do you call it Sebla? Sebla, because as I said before, I wanted something that says that I am Omani. Okay. The, the word Sebla is majlis in Oman. And it's okay. it's one, one of the words that is being used you know, within the Omani culture. So that's, that's, that's behind the, reason, the, the name. You had two versions of the platform. You had an English and you had an Arabic. Yes. You had an English with the name of uh, English Sebla. Yeah. Uh, and you had an Arabic, which is Omania.net. It started with the Arabic one. It started became with the Arabic. very famous. Yeah. And I remember one day I was interviewed by Allah Rahmaha Abir Tanir. Allah Rahmaha. Here in this studio. Oh, mashallah. And during the talk, she told me, why don't you open an English version? Because I see that there is a high demand for an English version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When same day, started the English, uh, English version of Sebla. I have only... Uh, managed it for a very sh- short time yeah. but then I thought that I will not be able to manage two websites so yeah. there was this great guy Kamakazi Ahmed yeah. 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 and uh, I, I just uh, asked him to take care of the Sebla and he took it from then yeah. Mashallah no it was both of them did a very very great job but uh, English Sebla is no longer available now yeah probably okay so you say probably because you, you don't know about it it's okay Parak, I gave it away. don't ask me that question I've managed it for a few months <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Now, uh, and Romania.net now as a domain. First thing is, it, truth be told, that site I personally know. Sometimes I used to go to ministries. Yeah. Sometimes I go to to, to offices. Yeah. Sometimes even to some houses. And you see when they open the desktops, you find people working. Sebla is always there. Sebla. Yeah. Sebla has been everywhere. Yeah. Today, Sebla is not there. Oh, there is another Sebla, not mine. But you say, yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? I mean, when you say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah is the feeling of that Sebla. This Sebla is secondary. That Sebla is the Sebla. The that original Sebla, Sebla is the, the original Sebla. Sebla. That is Said. Has been closed. Come on, yeah. we know it. Yeah. So that is no longer there. Yeah. What's the reason? Well, um, seven, seven, years years of, of, seven years of operation. Seven years of operation. And after seven years of operation, uh, there were some legal issues. At that time, there were no legal uh, law in Oman that, that, that clearly shows you uh, what are the responsibilities of a website owner. Mm-hmm. So I had an issue with the public prosecution and, 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 and uh, some of the authorities. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to be held responsible for everything that was written on the website. And I thought that's an impossible job because it's a live website. People just you know, type something and post it immediately. Mm-hmm. So after all this um, um, uh, legislation issues, I decided to stop uh, Sabla and I gave the chance to other people to run it. So the mm-hmm. same concept was adopted by other people who used to be moderators of Sabla itself. Uh, so the, the, the actual, the Sabla continued as a concept. It may okay. not be the same Sabla that I was running, yeah. but the concept is still there. And till today, the Sabla is uh, active. Active. The thunder okay. of the bulletin board Okay. Has been stolen by the active me- uh, uh, social media nowadays. Mm. I'm going to catch you up on the few statements you said. We just got a caller okay. on air. We'll just pick up the caller. Hello? Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Yes. Um, uh, my name is Ahlam Al Mahrook. I'm a colleague of uh, Saeed Al Rashid. <laughs> Bashallah, Bashallah. And I would like to. Um, just uh, contribute to this uh, wonderful program. Please do. Um, he's certainly um, a very creative person. Mashallah. And I have a question for him, please. Mashallah. You please. could have asked me at work. <laughs> <laughs> this is an opportunity to ask him many questions. He's on the air. No, 
Well, I have a reason why I'm asking it in the air, so yeah. that um, it's kind of a promise Please for, for us. Please shoot. Um, what is next? Uh, no doubt, uh, SEBD has changed um, um, lots of aspects that uh, have changed the uh, um, communication uh, and um, the way people, um, um, the, the freedom of uh, speech in, uh, in this country. So uh, my question is, what is your next initiative to change the things, the way things uh, are done? to give another uh, positive contribution to Oman. Uh, thank you, Ahlam. I don't think that's going to be my role anymore. I think I did my bit and I leave the rest for the others. Um, bulletin uh, <laughs> <laughs> boards are uh, extinct by nature now because they are controlled environments. You know, there are moderators who will moderate what you say. And other platforms like Twitter and, and, and other, you know, uh, Instagram and others, there is nobody monitoring what you say, so you can write whatever you like. That has really taken a big uh, hit. Uh, uh, I mean, the bulletin board has taken a big hit because of it. And uh, at some time when Facebook came, we thought, you know what, this is the social media. This is how far as it gets. And then suddenly Instagram comes and a picture is worth more than 1,000 words and people shift it to Instagram and then, you know, all these technologies come and go. Um, I don't think I'll be able to play as much role as, as before because of the uh, nature of the social networks. Nowadays, it's all international. It's really hard for someone to build up something that is uh, na- nationwide now uh, as much as before. So nowadays, if, if, I create, if I create a website or, or, or a platform that is as good or even better than any of the social networks that are running now, it doesn't mean that people are going to come to it because people want something international, want something globally known. So it is, it is becoming harder and harder by day to, make, actually, to be able to make a difference. But personally speaking, I think I have done my role. I have, I've, I've got what I, uh, what I wanted, and I've, I've, I've enjoyed seeing Sabla. Even after I left it, I've enjoyed seeing Sabla. It's like you raised a baby, and later somebody else is raising him for you, but you see him growing, and you really enjoy the, uh, you know, seeing him growing. So Sabla for me is like that. I don't think I'll be doing anything, uh, not, in, not, not in the technology part, no. Well, Ahmed, don't worry. I'll try to convince him. I will try to convince him after the program today. I will try to convince him. Okay, we'll do something. Very good. I'll rely on that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Thank you. Two four six zero two zero five eight. That's the number to call in. Said Rashdi, my friend here, is with me, and he will answer your questions uh, that you have pertaining to our subject today. Said, the new sabla has yeah. come out. Yeah. Okay. What's the difference to the old sublet? Well, the, technically speaking, it's the same. They have taken the same structure, the same design, even the same backgrounds and everything. Even the, no- so name, the, domain, the, name, two. the domain name was Omania.net and it, it was Omania2.net. And there was a reason because there is, there are thousands and like tens of thousands of, of uh, registered users who suddenly became homeless when yeah. it comes to technology. Yeah. I mean, they used to come to sublet on a daily basis yeah. and suddenly it's not there. Yeah. Someone had to fill the gap. So the idea of the, the new sublet was to, to stand with me in, during the legal issues that I had at the okay. time, and at the same time to provide to provide a, a means for people to yeah. continue doing what they're doing or using. There was an agreement between me and the creator of this Sebla uh, that if I wanted to bring back the original Sebla, he would shut down his website. Ah, okay. So this, there this was, was an agreed agreement. before, but after all these legal issues, and it was like ten months, and I was tired of it, and I told him, you know what, you have started, you have done a good job, please proceed, go ahead. Okay. So the current Sabla is, is a continuous, obviously a, a continuation of, of the original Sabla. Can you call it a clone place. of the original Sabla? It is a clone, yeah, it is. Why that is existing and the one you have done was not existing? Why? The one you have done, yeah. a very good one, yeah. great one, made an impact, was shut down and it the really, second one was not really shut down. It really is because of the laws. During my time, there was no law to control it. So at any time, I could be asked by the public prosecution or anybody okay. who didn't like anything written in my website. I could have been uh, uh, you know, taken to court or, and being sued for something that was written webs- in my website. Mm. So until the law was clear about it and defines exactly the responsibility of, of a website owner, it would, it would have been impossible for me to continue running the website. I have already had trials. I have gone through court for 10 months. And mm. if I reopen the website, I will probably have to go through the same route again. The new website came in with somebody who did not disclo- d- disclose his identity. So he decided... But, but Amal is very small. The, the person is known. Eh? He could be known, yes. I have uh, no question about it. But, but he did not disclose his identity. So chances of people suing him are much lower. Okay. 
So I decided that, you know what, it's not worth it for me. I have already started something. It's mm-hmm. working beautifully. People are being able to, uh, to write whatever they want to write. It, I don't really have to be in the picture anymore. I might be doing harm more than benefit when it comes to, you know, my name being attached to a website at that time. At that time. Yeah. Now, the site, uh, 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 the concept uh, is being, oh, we'll come back to that, the concept of the site that is happening right now. But uh, if you... You know that the law has changed now. Yes. And there is a law yes. for it. Yes. You know the laws. You have the experience. You've got yes. the tactics and everything. Yes. You don't come up with Omania 3? I don't think so. I think there is something called the first market share. And because I was the first in the market, people used to come to my website. Why? Because if you write something in Sebla during those days, you are pretty sure that there are more than 100,000 visits a day for the Sebla. It means that your article will be read. Yeah. And people come to read because there are writers on the website. So I've already created a, 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 an ecosystem where writers and readers are there. Yeah. If you lose this, even for the shortest time, if you want to compete for it again, to gain these, what you call it, users and visitors back again, it's a much harder job. It's so for me, it was easier because I was the first. Now, if I want to go back again, I'll just be ruining everything because whatever users of current Sebla are using it. And if I start my Sebla, 50% of them will come here and the other 50 will be there. And if you write an article there, nobody's going to read it here. Mm. So I would like, I would love to see everybody in the same website. It makes sense when it, it comes to sense. social networking. It makes sense everybody in the same website because when you write something, you're guaranteed that whatever you write will eventually reach the person whom you are targeting. Hypothetically, let's say we come, we start up a site similar sublet that is available today, yeah. would we get into a problem? I want to go and start up one today. Or oh, anyone's listening right now wants you to go and start could, up. Would he or could, she get into a problem? You could, although the laws have been there, but the interpretation of the law is still not very clear, for, I mean, in, in some areas. As a website owner, there are still responsibilities that you have, and you will eventually have to make sure that your moderators are moderating the website very well. Considering that the amount of users of bulletin boards has now decreased very drastically, Yeah. Opening a bulletin board now doesn't really make mu- that much sense, mm. unless it's a specialized site. For mm. example, if you open a website that is specialized in Lamborghini cars, mm. you know, something that is, you know, a niche market, something that people come and talk technical, mm. then you have really nothing to worry about. I mean, nobody is going to come and, and say something bad about anybody in a website that is specialized in, in a very you know, technical matter or an IT yeah. field, for example. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let us take a quick break before we continue this interesting session with Brother Saeed. Interesting discussion we have today with Saeed Rashdi, the founder of uh, Sablet Arab, a website that has created a great rounds in, in, in uh, Oman and has impacted a lot of people. Saeed, tell me one thing. Now, you say seven years is the, the, the time that you have worked on uh, Sablet Arab. What have you gained? What have you lost with it? I've gained a lot of friends, that's for sure. I had around uh, 40 moderators at the website. Obviously, they are working for free. Nobody, ha- I, I never had to pay anybody anything to to, be, uh, to do this job. And I was exposed to thousands of people. So I, you know, every time I go out of house, I meet people and everybody knows me everywhere. That was, you know, something nice. And obviously, I had I gained experience of trying to handle pressure. You know, um, uh, an article that's written in, in Sebla would really... Um, you know, uh, upset many people. At the same time, other people look at it as a as a brilliant article that's worth publishing. So to to balance this between between people's expectations was really hard. And uh, well, I, I learned I, ha- I learned how to be diplomatic a little bit. Okay, so th- those are the, the benefits that you've gained from it. Obviously, the technical benefits also. Yeah. I, ha- I I had to I, I had the experience dealing with Linux uh, systems with uh, MySQL databases and. Uh, that was a technical uh, geek in me, liking it. Mm, mashallah. Uh, what have you lost then? What do you feel that you have lost? A lot of time. A lot of time and, and uh, uh, you know, but, but it was worth it. If I had to do it, I would do it a million times again. Okay. Financial loss? Uh, financial loss. I, I, um, my father helped me, actually. My father was paying for me. No, mashallah. Wow, mashallah. Peace All pass the time. on regards to your dad. I'm Thank sure he's listening you. to the radio right now. Mashallah. <laughs> He, he helped me with the financials. He actually supported me because I was a student. I couldn't mm. afford uh, paying for the service and everything. Especially but it costs a lot of money. Yeah, when, when, when the server is overloaded, when you have 300,000 visits a day, and those days, servers were expensive. Yeah, bandwidth you dedicated expensive. server to write. Yeah, yeah so it, it used to be somewhere around maybe four or 500 reals a month mm. at some time. 
Um, I've only started getting advertisements and income from Sabla only the last, you know, one or two years. I've started making money enough to cater uh, to to compensate for the for the for the losses. Okay, okay, and and uh, um, you you. So sorry, I didn't look at the challenges that you face as well. Part of the challenges you said you looked into was the the legality, yeah. but operational of it. Do you have a challenge? Operational of it, yeah. You you have to have a lot of moderators and you have to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing okay so because you know you have uh, i had like 11 sablas and each sabla has a sub sabla of it so like there are more than 30 parts of the website mm. and and each part will be having new posts every day so you have to make sure that the moderators are doing their job and the problem is someone is going to come in the middle of the night at 2 a.m and write something that is not supposed to be written in sabla in a very important location and everybody will see it so I had to make sure that I have moderators even outside the country I had moderators from UK for example Omanis, wow. Omanis who yeah. are outside so the time difference will be will, 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 will be in our favor yeah. when, it, when it's night here it's morning in the US so someone from the US a moderator will be able to see if some, something is written so the moderation part was really tough uh, it's a bit challenging and as I told you the, it's a gray area if I come today and say Tariq Al-Barwani's show in the radio is really bad Tariq doesn't know how to handle his guests and doesn't know how to speak to them. This will be considered an insult by some people, but by other people it will be considered like, you know, a reasonable um, criticism. Yeah. And those days, as I told you, the early days, it was much harder. It was a gray area for us. Should I keep this? Should I remove it? It's really not easy. How is it today? I think it'll be easier. I don't run the website now, but I think it'll be easier now because, you know, the sense of criticism is being acceptable now. If I go to anybody responsible anywhere and tell him you're not doing your job right, he's more likely not to consider it as a personal attack mm -hmm. comparing to 10, 10 years ago or so. Can anyone create a sublet today? Technically speaking, yes. It's a very easy task. It takes You install a software called the vBulletin, uh, get a server for a few reals a month, and yeah, you're, you're up alive. But how are you going to get visitors to come to your sabla. That's, 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 that's the most challenging and, part. And, yeah. and, reasons yeah. and, and there's many people who are doing it anyway. And people uh, come back to websites that they really like and they find benefits of. So I have seen some, like I think there was a website about called City Masqat or so, I don't remember the name exactly. This guy have invested so much money and he did a wonderful website that has all the information about Masqat and you can, you know, reserve a restaurant and do stuff. People never visited the website as and much as he ended up closing it. He ended up closing it. Yeah. Uh, so I remember that do, do, during the late nineties, if I'm not right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the 2000s. 2000s. 2000s yeah. Okay. Yeah, 2000s. Sorry. Yeah, 2000s, 2000s, yes. early 2000s. Yeah. So th th this guy has spent so much money, and he did a brilliant website, and he had he had uh, you know programmers working for him, he had marketing people working for him, but no one would advertise in a website that's not visited enough yeah. because you know, the internet is usually per per click or per per visit. So yeah. if if somebody wants to advertise in, in Sabla, I will tell him I will advertise your advertisement, I will show your ad, uh, uh, when, when do you call it, ten thousand times for so much reals. Yeah. If I don't have enough visitors, nobody's gonna bother. Yeah. Um, and, and do you uh, see or believe that the social media with the with the, with the networking tools that are available now, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Snapchat, WhatsApp, and so on, yeah. has impacted how these uh, bulletin, the bulletin like Sabla and so on, or bulletin boards, how they work? Yeah, obviously, it's clear yeah. that the bulletin it boards are killed not, it, I, I think. I, yeah, it's uh, it is still gonna sustain for technical uh, what you call it technical discussions. Yeah. But not, not not more of the opinion things. Opinion things will be more in Twitter. But you, you will you will always if you if you Google how to change my car's fuel injector, for example, mm -hmm. most likely you will end up in reading a, a discussion board. of a bulletin board somewhere. So it's like mm -hmm. a bank of knowledge. So yeah. still, it's going to be used. It's 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 going to stay for a very long time, yeah. but uh, it's not going to be more of a live chat and discussions like before. Yeah, yeah. and 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 also, uh, I feel it would be easier for someone to create a platform within a social media because once you create within a social media, it's easy to go a place where there are users. Yeah, I but have... in, in in a site like the Bull and so on, you need to go and look for users. Do you agree with that? Yeah. I have I have seen uh, businesses who started their uh, their pages in in Facebook pages or Google Plus or any of them and doing very well from 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 this uh, online exposure better than what you could do in a, in a, in a bulletin board. I have I, I was just talking about my company that I've started. Yeah. My first project I did not pay even one real for any newspaper to advertise. Mm -hmm. I've used 
uh, uh, social media. Yeah. I've used Facebook mm. yeah, heavily, okay, okay. heavily. Sure. Yeah. And the return of investment in Facebook advertisement is way better than anything else. Okay. You pay a few reals a day and you get thousands of likes and thousands of you know calls phone calls and and and, and people commenting in your in your page and suddenly everything just becomes alive and for for a really minimum amount of investment would you think that's better for businesses or individuals to advertise in social Online. media compared to newspapers yes yes and we, there, there there will be um, it depends in the, in, the, in the target my target clients my target mm. customers were uh, if, uh, what you call it uh, newly married couples mm. who have dual income this yes. is i have profiled the, the market and i have chosen what what i am targeting yeah. and those usually are the most uh, people who use uh, electronics if you are targeting a more elderly category of people you will probably be doing much better in a newspaper so if you are advertising for an expensive car yeah. you would do better in newspaper because those people who are well established are much more likely to be an older generation who are still focusing the newspapers more than digital but if you are going to sell a nice telephone uh, that just came in the market and your your target is young guy young 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 uh, population you're more likely to get more customers from from online media from the online media yeah. do you see this a threat for the traditional media it is it is like newspapers you have seen when when the, when the when the online newspapers came hundreds of newspapers in us for example had to shut down because you know they couldn't compete with the electronic media in in a website in, today unfortunately we heard about another earthquake in nepal you must have heard about it in the morning it was a very sad news if if it if i were depending on the newspapers i'd only know about it tomorrow mm. but because i follow many of the news websites i get them in my phone you know it's easier to get up to date Yeah. Even so paper 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 based newspapers are now shifting towards the the online websites and they publish some of their news early in their website prior to publishing it in the paper later. Mm. So today you will find a much deeper articles well written by professionals in the paper. Mm. But you will get an updated information much faster in the online Okay. So there is still 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 space for for uh, for paper based newspapers but obviously it's not going to be as much as before. It's no longer the main source of information like before. Would you recommend uh for news uh, and media agency to jump the bandwagon and get into the social media and online uh, or or and or, or remain with the uh, traditional media or do both? They can do both. Uh, I think uh, Al Shabib's newspaper has done a, a wonderful job when it comes to socializing and, and meeting uh, accessing uh, social medias they they have established some platforms that will initiate discussions about what they write in the paper yeah and uh, nowadays if you read something you can actually go back to their uh, platform and discuss it and you know see what other people think about it okay. so it's an interesting combination between paper and online Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the number to call in is 2460-2058. We're going to take a quick break and return with our interesting session with Mr. Said. 10 minutes uh, to, to go before the end of the program, Said. One of the sessions I've seen uh, recently, uh, I missed to attend. I would have loved to attend, but definitely I know. I mean, yeah, I'm a VIP. I can get access to you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so we can have that session. But it was about cloud, the risk of cloud. Yes. Now, If you could share in few words what is the cloud basically the internet well uh, cloud computing is a is a, a mainly a marketing uh, name to talk about all the services that you can you can get through the internet so a company for example would would run its own software locally within the headquarters but if they want to go cloud based services that means hiring somebody else from outside and give them access to their application and it differs uh, there, there is there is cloud storage for example so if you only use uh, someone else's hard disk somewhere in the internet to store your files or and up to cloud services which means that you can actually access a program that has been developed by them mm-hmm. and use it on news base mm-hmm. on, yeah. like microsoft has got the azure and the google example, has got yeah. their own apps uh, and 365 for example from yeah, the office is a mixture between an offline copy in your app in your computer but everything else is stored in the in the internet would that be and known as the hybrid be, it's a hybrid hybrid of cloud yes uh, what is the risk of cloud 
Yeah, the session was about the risks because everybody is talking about cloud computing and everybody is talking about it as a, you know something that's that's the future. Granted, but there are so many issues that people tend to um, not 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 think about it enough. Uh, for example, if you are a business and and you have all your services uh, cloud based, mm -hmm. what are you going to do when the, when you lose connectivity? For example, um, le uh, uh, internet lines do disconnect sometimes and do fail sometimes. Uh, one thing else is, uh, for example, what do you do if you want to customize your application, or, you know, if you want to work out your application to something else? If it's an in-house uh, software, you can easily develop it and change it. But if you are one user out of a million users who are using these applications, you're likely not to be able to do whatever you want. If the feature of customization is already there, then you can do it. Otherwise, you'll have to, you know, even if you request them, you're more, more likely not to get it. One more thing is, for example, uh, if who owns the data that are stored outside? Your company is storing your data somewhere in the U.S. Who owns this information? And what what happens if this company who is providing this cloud service, what happens if they fail? You know, uh, you will not be able to get your da access to your data. And we have seen some very serious issues with that. And security concerns also. If you have a closed environment within your company and and only your staff can access the information, then there is nothing to worry about. But if you are exposed to the Internet and everybody else is being able to access the service, there, is, there are more chances of someone being able to hack to your applications, to hack to your systems and, you know, modify, alter the information that you have or maybe steal them. What about the privacy? privacy concerns for in that case it's more likely for end users not companies and you, we have seen very famous people getting their pictures exposed because they store them in the cloud mm. and i don't want to say that the cloud is not good I'm, I'm i'm a heavy user of dropbox for example and i really believe that it's it's really helping me but i use it with care with, with care with i care. will not upload very sensitive information because if the account gets hacked then you know I, I I would be losing a lot. Nowadays, there are better technologies when it comes to security. There is this two-way authentication, for example, something that you remember as a password and something physical like your phone. So if you want to log into somewhere, you have to remember the password and you have to have the phone in your hand. Mm -hmm. So even if somebody knows your password, you won't be able to access your data without having physical access to your phone. And two more authentication, like the RSA, they have also some devices. Right, for example, the devices yeah, or, or using your own phone, for example. Yeah. It has to be something physical and something that you remember in your mind. Yeah, and, and, and most of these cloud the services best, the best security you can get yes mashallah said what is your future plans well um i currently i just started my business so inshallah i will be dedicated to run that business as much as possible i believe that i'm adding something of value to everybody so that's where i'm going to focus and hey. i intend to be a good dad as as much as i possible mashallah mashallah anything you wish to share to the audience today Thank you very much for having me and sorry to having to have to listen to me all this time. <laughs> Saeed, thank you very, very much for joining us today on Oman Radio FM 90.4 to share about your success and achievement. And believe me, I loved everything you said. You are a great man. You are a legend. And I respect that very, Shukran. very big. Thank you. And I would like to take this opportunity to wish you the very best and success in all that you do. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program for this week. I hope you all had an intriguing time with us. Let us catch up again next week on Tuesday, same time, 5 p.m. for another knowledge session. I'm Tariq Al Barwani along with DJ Safiya for wishing you all a happy and a pleasant week. Ma'asalama. Saeed, let's go out now and enjoy your Lamborghini. <laughs> Thank you.